the beautiful, colorful, exquisite, splendid, glorious world we live in is opened to us by one of the most remarkable pieces of equipment, our eyes. What has it to do with this video, you ask? There is something. Ever wondered how our eyes really work? We almost take them for granted all the time. Our eyes are so sensitive they can see 10 million different colors and they are so adaptive they can see both in bright and in the dark conditions. Tiny muscles in the iris make this possible by continuously adjusting the pupil, making it smaller in bright conditions and larger in dark conditions. This mechanism of iris and pupil was the inspiration for aperture. Just like the iris controlling the size of the pupil, there are 5 to 10 blades that can control the size of the aperture inside the lenses. So if you see, this is how the aperture looks. See, this is a large aperture, this is small aperture. The size of the aperture is denoted by F numbers. Ever wondered what these values are on your lens? These are the largest apertures your lens can offer. These F numbers may be rather confusing in the beginning, but if you think about them, they make perfect sense. Just remember it this way. The larger the aperture is, the smaller the F number will be. The smaller the aperture is, the larger the F number will be. Now let's see how the aperture affects the pictures. Well, before that, you need to see how to change the aperture values in your cameras. If you have a Nikon 7000 series, um, there will be a front dial. If you turn them, the aperture value will change. If you have a Nikon 5000 or 3000 series, you'll have to press down the exposure compensation button. It will be in the top somewhere here and turn the back dial. So you press it and turn it, you will have the aperture values changing. If you have a Canon camera, click here and see how to change the aperture values in your Canon cameras. Anyway, coming back to where we were, there is a series of photos taken with this lens, a 50mm lens. This lens has a maximum aperture value of f1.8. Let's start from there. So this is f1.8, f2.8, f4, f8, f16, f22. The picture taken at f1.8 is too bright. The aperture was fully open, allowing more light to the sensor. Whereas in f22, the picture appears very dark. The aperture was almost closed, allowing very less light to the sensor and darkening the image. Did you notice something else? I agree, some of the pictures were really dark to notice anything. Here is another set of the same images. The shutter speeds were compensated in this case to match the aperture. At f1.8, the background was totally blurred. It is hard to recognize what's going on in the background. Whereas in f4, the background is not as blurry as f1.8. In f8, the background starts to get clear details. In f16, the background gets more and more details. In f22, the background is very close to being sharply focused. Why is that? Because the aperture not only affects the amount of light entering your camera, but it also affects depth of field. Let's look at this example. This is a play area for children and we have four swings side by side. Let's try to focus the second swing from here. And before that, the camera is set in aperture priority mode, so all I had to do was just change the aperture and the rest of the things were calculated by the camera on its own. This is a Nikon 70 to 200 lens. This is a zoom lens, so you can go from 70 to 200. This has a maximum aperture of f2.8. Let's start out at the maximum aperture of 2.8 and at 200 mm. That is full zoom. At f2.8, only the tip of the swing is in sharp focus. Everything else is blurred. They're out of focus. At f4, the tip of the swing is in sharp focus and the middle of the swing is in focus too. But the rest is clearly out of focus. At f8, now the swing is showing more details, still totally not in focus. Finally, at f16, the whole swing is in focus. 
at F22, the whole swing and the pillar behind it are in focus, but the other swings are still out of focus. So no matter how much we try, we still couldn't get everything in focus. That's because at 200mm, the depth of field is very less, only a short range of distance will be in focus. This is called shallow depth of field. Very short range of distance, shallow depth of field. Now let's take a look at pictures shot at 70mm. At f2.8, almost three-fourths of the swing is in focus. At f4, the whole swing is in focus. At f8, the swing and the pillar behind it are in focus too. At f16, the focus has extended up to third swing and the background is showing a lot of details too. At f22, everything behind the second swing is in sharp focus. Now at 50mm. At f2.8, half of the swing is in focus and the depth of field increases as we go up the f numbers. The depth of field increased so drastically so I had to use Google Maps to show the actual range. This is at f16 and this is at f22. Now the most important wide angle lens. Most of you beginners would have bought a DSLR camera that comes with kit lenses of 18 to 55 or 18 to 105 mm. So the 18 this wide angle range. So this is for you. At f2.8, the whole swing is in focus. At f4, all the four swings are in sharp focus. Wow, what a jump. At f8, we need a map to show the actual range. These are at f16 and f22. Did you notice another pattern here? Let's look at the images at f2.8. At 2.8, the depth of field is shallow at all the focal lengths. At f22, the depth of field is deeper at all the focal lengths. At large apertures, that is small f numbers, the depth of field will be very shallow, so you can selectively focus on what you want. But at small apertures, that is large f numbers, the depth of field will be very deep, so everything will be in focus. That is from foreground to background, everything will be in sharp focus. Similarly, if you have a telephoto lens or a zoom lens, um, such as 70 to 300 or 150 to 600, the depth of field will be very shallow, so you can selectively focus your subject. Whereas in wide angle lenses, the depth of field will be very deep, so everything will be in focus, unless it is really, really close to the lens. If you don't have immediate access to your cameras, just try this. Our one eye has a focal length of 22 to 24 mm. So that's a wide angle lens. Now close one of your eyes and bring your thumb close to your eyes and focus. You can see the background getting blurred, right? Yes. Now extend your arm and look at the thumb. You can still see your thumb and the background will get blurred, but not as dramatic as having the thumb close to you. Now select a subject that is a bit far away, maybe 10 to 15 feet away. Try to focus it selectively on that subject. Does the background get blurred? No, right? Yes, that's what happens with wide angle lenses. If you want to shoot portraits, it's better to shoot between f4 and f6. This gives a decent shallow depth of field blurring up the background. If you want to shoot group photos, choose an aperture between f8 and f11. You'll have deep depth of field and everyone will be in focus. If you want to shoot landscapes, choose an aperture above f13. You'll have everything in focus. Well, that's it for today, guys. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and share with your friends. Please subscribe to V2K Photography channel. If you'd like to support me, please visit patreon.com slash V2K Photography. I'll be so grateful. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Until then, take care guys. Bye bye.